my name is Bungoto Mutalakosi and welcome to Bonang, which is a brand new magazine show. And yes, we bring together class and elegance. I know this is a show you've been waiting for. Yes, join me for the next 30 minutes as we indulge in La Dolce Vita. Still to come on Bonang. Ah, it's awesome, man. It's hot on the dance floor. My soul, street cars staring up the sky. Uh, we like to go camping out in the bush and enjoy the uh, pristine, quiet environment. Coming up, time out. Throwing parties has been trendy lately in Botswana, and themed parties are definitely the end thing. One such party today in Gaps is the 70s and 80s. The night takes us back to the Cold War nights of fun with a display of colorful water features, cool retro lighting, members only jackets, mulets, and Ray Ban sunglasses. GICC was definitely a place of memories. Looking forward to the dance floor. I'm here, I'm representing. They didn't even shave. All out, baby. All out. Just for you guys. I'm gonna do this 70s thing. Come inside, follow me. I'm gonna do the robot and the bump. Okay, this is my show. You don't tell me to follow you. <laughs> I love the hair. Thank you, thank you. If you're not sure what to wear to slash decade's back party, try putting more than the usual. It was, after all, the decade of excess, greed, curly pam, leg warmers, jellies, acid wash jeans, and shoulder parrots. Are you from the 70s or the 80s? The 60s. <laughs> so the outfit is the 70s. 70s, I want to hear Gloria. I want to hear all the old tunes. and. I wish we had Donna Summers here. I love the blue, the you know, the yellow, the orange. Yes. Yeah. What inspired the outfit? I just wanted to stand out. That's all. I just wanted to stand out, and I hope I did that. Well, rather embarrassingly, I actually own all of these things, so uh, yeah, I didn't have to buy anything specially. Okay, are they from the 70s or the 80s? Oh, no, I think they probably there's probably a 70s jacket and maybe an 80s hat, so it's a little bit of a mix. Which era are you particularly from? Are you from the 80s or the 70s? No, I'm afraid I'm a 70s child. <laughs> I was born in the 60s, okay. so 70s and 80s was the era that I actually grew up. Uh -huh. So drag queens and prostitutes and. It was all from my era. Okay. You like what I look like? <laughs> <laughs> but what's the motive behind the party? Initially we started it as a, a marketing tool for the, to showcase Grand Palm and what we can do and how great it can be if you hold your events here. And after the first one it just took off and it became a yearly thing. It's the must-have of Grand Palm. It's without a doubt the party of the year. Without a doubt. Um, the response is just, I mean, I'll just be walking through the passageway and the guys will come and they'll shake a hand and yeah. say, you know, wow, you know, we are hungry for this type of function, hungry for this type of event. You know, where can you go? We can your good old classics. And that sound system behind me is over 1.5 million pulis worth of sound and lighting. Laser brought here from SA. The sound is our sound and lighting. With a few extras added on, it is just uniquely beautiful. What we loved most about the 70s and 80s nightlife was the music, lighting and the disco balls. GICC was transformed into a downtown nightlife of the 70s or the 80s. The DJ blast from the past, although they no longer play such music these days, made the dance floor a place to be. So 
such a different party, hey? People are so relaxed and remembering the 70s and the 80s. How do you feel about it? I think it's memorable. It's just one of those once a year favorites that uh, you have to be here. GC people and those from as far as the United States of America came dressed in their platform sole shoes which were the epitome of the spirits of the 70s and in certain flared trousers which shimmered as they swayed to the music beat. I've met a lot of people who are saying that from the States, you know, I'm thinking, wow, is this how much they market it? <laughs> I wish it was all the way from marketing. <laughs> no, I think there's a lot of people from the UK, all the people from the DTC that are moving, there's a lot of people already here. And yeah, there's lots of people who heard about it and wow, it's a place to come. No, it's a good show. Yeah, yeah. It's a girl. The music. The music is excellent. They're playing Staying Alive right now. So it's good. <laughs> yeah. What would you say to my viewers at home who are not here? Um, we wish you were here. We're going to have fun. <laughs> Are they playing your favorite music? Um, yes, yeah, pretty good. Yeah, I kind of like Blondie. They're pretty cool. Um, so yeah, it's good. It's been a great evening so far. We cannot understand why fashion during those years seemed so cool, but because we're going back in time, don't skimp or be weighed down or be held back by the 19 sensibilities. Go for it and add that extra layer of eyeliner. Apply the aquanet. Wear your bracelets. After all, moderation is for the other decades. This is good. Isn't he looking hot? Are you loving this or what? I'm loving it. One tata. What's the inspiration? How did you get to this outfit? Tonight I was inspired by you. <laughs> How long did it take for you to put this look together? Well, I'm a, I'm a spontaneous guy, so I just rock whatever is in, is in the wardrobe. I just look around and put it all together. So it, it's that quick for me to come up with something nice. Uh, 15 minutes, I put my shirt on, I was waiting for the wig, I've been waiting for this event for like three weeks, so I'm here now. I saw the, a Mercedes outside, I thought I'd just take this off the car, so I took that, and then, yeah. Let's talk about the hair. The hair blonde? No, we never really get the chance to go blonde, you know. My mom actually helped me put this one together. <laughs> yes. Well, except for the red lipstick. Oh, yeah. <laughs> And for some, it brought back memories. While for most of us, it was an opportunity to experience the cold war nights of fun. What a top-notch event. Coming up after the break. Uh, we like to go camping out in the bush and enjoy the uh, pristine, quiet environment. Hi, my name is Mercy Rebaone Tebe, the A-list diva, and you are watching Bonang. Hi, I'm Zanzela Heishwald from Zan Promotions. You are watching Bonang. Coming up, Fashion Diary. While the men in the streets may not understand what yellow and black fashion means, fashionistas do, even if it's a party. Many today have forgotten how to dress, I mean properly. The fashion party themed yellow and black was to encourage everyone to dress up and play with color. It was a sizzling night of glitz and glam and a party to die for organized by red carpet events. I'm sitting next to an amazing young man, yes, young man. He's not only a husband, he's a father, he's an event organizer, he's a renowned photographer. Kosi, welcome to Bonang. Hello. Now let's talk yellow and black. 
from nowhere. It's something that we've never had of. And these are two colors that um, I've never really seen combining in a lot of ways. <laughs> Where is this concept coming from? A uh, recession. <laughs> God. <laughs> you know when it's a recession, it's, it's basically almost like a blackout. Mm -hmm. And then you do need a little bit of sunshine, so the yellow and black. Oh yeah, yeah. Wow. So the idea was you don't have money, you don't have a lot of budget, you want to do things, but you have to use what you got. Mm -hmm. So that's where the concept came from. The designers had plenty of time to design gowns that blended yellow and black, and at the same time showing their creative minds and art. They are best designs to compete internationally and of course in our wardrobes. Jun Bag, a former local university student who lashed out 1930s inspiration. At first sight, her designs are quite conventional, but the devil is in the details. Let's talk about um, Jun Bag. Uh, yeah, Jun Bag brought in the 1930s to the to, to, to 2012, you know. <coughs> Yeah. Where where was the inspiration from? I know you're not June Bag, but possibly you had a chit chat with June Bag. <laughs> <laughs> well, June, June Bag is a student, or she was a student then. So June Bag was inspired by the 30s. So she tried to bring the era to the current times, and I think she did a wonderful job. Oh yeah, she's yeah. Great. She's a uh, she's very artistic. Tabidi's designs were more into the elegant look. Oh, we love them. This is what a grown-up woman wears when she wants to be admired, but remains less than the laugh Sunshine of the part. to the idea that art has to be well executed and manifest the artist's powers. As for Black Trash, their creative designs were awesome but they went overboard and brought us gold and black, showing us who the leader of fashion in Bozana is. We are told once identified, fashion begins to change. Della Trash brought bravery and creativity to fashion. I like the boldness of not being concerned with trends and your timeless designs. Black Child, in her designs we could see a designer who grew up in a certain environment and definitely not growing out of it. Her African fashion mind is portrayed in her designs. The whole idea is, is more like a mentorship uh, program. You bring a couple of established designers to mentor the students. Oh, the upcoming ones. Yeah. So, what Tabi D, what Black Trash, what uh, Black Child, they were not competing, or they were basically creating a foundation for the youngsters to come together, you know, to be inspired, to do something fresh. Let's talk about the models. Was there any criteria for the models? No. We had two mm. weeks to put the show together. We just wanted people who could, you know, kept walk. That's it, man. Anyone, you walk every day. I'm going to kill you for that, Kosi. What are you talking you. about? <laughs> People walk every day, so just give them an opportunity. If, if the designers feel them, then you know, you're on the list. That's how simple it was. Black has been the reigning hip color for so 
long. Now feel free to add yellow touch to your black as yellow is the new black. Personally, I have never been brave enough to mix colors when dressing up and the next time I go shopping, a mix of colors to my collection is a definite must. Batswana, do they support local designs? Uh, or do I, I, we support local design? Tell you what, <laughs> when I am doing awareness, I, yeah. you know, sometimes it's about uh, there is basically a lack of uh, an awareness campaign when yeah. it comes to who is really out there, who is doing what, jalo jalo. So what we are doing, we have partnered with uh, Bulgarian Fashion Week, the winner of the uh, say top three finalists of the yellow and black mm -hmm. are going to showcase in Bulgaria. Yeah. yeah. With T V imagine Bonang rocking. Yeah. Yeah, people are gonna get to know. But no, yellow and black is not about two days. It's actually about giving someone the experience of the really international and the platform. platforms to showcase, to design and then to become a quality designer, mm -hmm. not just a an aspiring student. Oh, who doesn't need that platform? Anyway, this is Bonang and we bring you the best of the good life. Still to come on leisure and lifestyle. Hi, my name is Lame Kiaketsi. And I'm Pina Karan Tobatang. And, and you're watching Bonang. This is Emma Warriors and you're watching Bonang. Coming up, leisure and lifestyle. In Botswana, the Toyota Kalahari Botswana 1000 Desert Race represents the biggest event organized this year. Like any other years, the media's attention is totally focused on the bikes, quads, off-road car battles that light up the Kalahari bushes, where over 200,000 spectators spend the weekend to feel the rush that is associated with the race. Tell me, what's your feel about the race in general? The feeling about this race is awesome. It's good. It's nice to be in nature. It's nice to see all the people being happy. Is it something that you're very passionate about? Yeah, racing. Off-road racing. Who's winning today? Toyota. But the Ford will be winning tomorrow. Can we put a bet on it? Yes. How much? Uh, how much is the food? A thousand to one? <laughs> <laughs> it is an off-road endurance race with a tough terrain and the vehicles used are true off-road vehicles or you can call them the modified on-road vehicles used in rallies. Spectators couldn't have asked for a better weekend of leisure and fun as they found better view spots for their favorite cars. Bonang brings you behind the scenes of the race with a touch of leisure and lifestyle. For some, the race presents an outdoor adventure while for others it is a hobby. This is the lifestyle. Look around. This is the lifestyle. People are having fun. People have camped here. People are living here. People are eating here, sleeping here. They are having fun. We meet a team of adventurers who were all equipped for the bush just to enjoy what Botswana has to offer. So you put aside some things in your life for this type of lifestyle, for the desert race? Yeah, we go to every race. Wow. Mm, all the rallies, off road. Oh gosh, talk about English breakfast in the middle of nowhere. This team really went all out to have a good time. Can I have a bit of breakfast? Yeah. <laughs> yes, you may. How do you like your eggs? Well done. Well done. Here's one for you if you want to try it. Hope these guys allow me to get into that house here. Hello, knock knock, hello, hello. Can I come in? Can I come in? Oh, do you want to show us around? Show us around. Oh, well, this is a bit unorganized at the moment. Yeah, we're just getting ready for DSP later today. So what basically we do have all the spare parts in bins here. On top there over here, spare panels at the back. Yeah, in front there we've got the kitchen and the shower and all that things. So yeah, pretty rig. You can see that people really go all out. This, this is like a kitchen. There's a microwave here. There's a fridge here. There's cups here, um, there's a mini sink here, and there's also... So, how did you plan for the desert race? Uh, 
I haven't done any planning. I'm just tagging along, having a good time. Most of the planning was done by the crew, the engineers, um, the chefs, all that, making sure everyone's fed, making sure the cars are up and running. We've got our uh, uh, cutlery, everything, our uh, uh, meat. We're not supposed to bring it through the border, I think. <laughs> Fortunately, we've got lots of meat here, so why bring meat to Botana, honestly, now? <laughs> <laughs> and we've got our coffee and tea and everything. Okay, let's open, let's open, let's see. There's lots of food here, there's apples, there's tomatoes. There's spices, all sorts of spices. These guys are not shot of anything. They have everything. They're eating well, hey? Coffee. It's healthy. They've got coffee. Oh, gosh. They've got everything. Um, let's talk bedding. Bedding? Mm -hmm. Where do you sleep? We sleep on top. Is he serious? They sleep on top? I don't know. Every guy's got his own kind of sleeping place. One guy's on top like me. On that vehicle there. Other guys got their uh, uh, tents on the bottom, but it all depends on where you want to sleep, if you want to sleep. What preparation went into preparing for this endeavor, for this beautiful, beautiful raid? Uh, well, first you start by packing your vehicle and making sure that you've got all the necessary uh, stuff for food and uh, bedding and tents and stuff like that to be comfortable. Uh, we like to go camping out in the bush and enjoy the uh, pristine quiet environment and uh, it's just nice to do it here in Botswana where you can feel safe and uh, uh, a lot of friendly people and uh, we enjoy your country, it's very nice here. So you bring your own food, um, water, bedding, everything? Yeah, completely. We are self-sufficient. Uh, We've uh, brought everything that we need and for this whole weekend we just uh, rough it in the bush. Would you say motorsport is a lifestyle, a hobby? I think it's both. Um, it's, um, it's definitely a lifestyle, yeah. And for most of, for most of the guys I'll be as well. Yeah. What does it mean to you personally? Um, it's fun. It's hard work, it's um, disappointing sometimes, like today for us going home early. But yeah, it's, it's fun. It's a hobby and it's a job, you know, I've got, we both, Duncan and myself, we've both got other jobs back home. We both run our own businesses, so, um, uh, you know, motorsport unfortunately isn't big enough in South Africa to actually make a living out of it. So uh, we have to have other jobs to keep us. Facing uncharted territory is quite a testing situation. When you don't know what to expect in terms of terrain and rivals, you have no choice but to adapt. The stakes of the Dakar Challenge added further spice to this year's race. Getting inside the largest rally of Southern Africa and discovering the atmosphere, myth, lifestyle and unique landscapes, the people, fathers leaving their dreams through their sons, this can only be found in the Galahari bushes where everlasting memories are made. How long have you been racing personally? Sure, I started my uh, motocross career when I was 20 years old, quite late in terms of motorcycles and racing, but uh, I did my first Botswana Desert Race in 1982 on a motorcycle and uh, won my first Desert Race in 1984. Isn't motorsport a dangerous sport? It is a dangerous sport, but uh, I think as far as motorsport goes, it's probably one of the safer sports. But uh, there's lots of sports that are dangerous. Rugby is dangerous, cricket can be dangerous. So uh, I think you've got to look after yourself. And as long as you keep a, keep a cool head and sensible, there's nothing wrong with it. I've been lucky. I've been racing for many, many years. And broken my own, only bone I've broken my body is my collarbone. So. Have you always wanted to do something like this? Yeah, I have. I mean, uh, my dad, he started racing in the 1980s and I was only born in the 1990s. So I've grown up with it all my life and it's something I've always wanted to do. So it's kind of a dream come true for me. Toyota had to stand up after 13 years of a dry spell to be counted. And it could only be Duncan Vores behind the wheels. And that was sweet music to the locals. And we were there to capture the final moments of the race.
that was your weekly dose of glitz, glamour, leisure and style. Join us again next week as we bring you La Dolce Vita Baby, the best of the good life.